Baltimore's mail service is among the worst in the nation, and it's been that way for a while now. You're not kidding. Today, federal legislators met in our city to discuss solutions. WMAR 2 News' Mallory Safaste tells us what they're proposing to improve our mail delivery. Two. These delays are costing USPS customers. They're having to pay bill late fees. It's impacted their credit scores, and they haven't been able to rely on the mail for timely delivery of prescription medications. Today, the Baltimore Postmaster saying mail service is getting better, but he couldn't guarantee significant improvements. In complaints and statistics, mail delivery in Baltimore is bleak. We did not receive mail for six weeks due to missing utility bills and invoices, we incurred hundreds of dollars in late fees. Two audits in the last several months took a closer look at Baltimore's performance metrics and underlying causes. Auditors uncovered mismanagement, broken equipment, attendance issues, and improper scanning resulting in decreased productivity and nearly a million pieces of delayed mail. Baltimore has more often than not underperformed the nationwide average since fiscal year 2012. The Subcommittee on Government Operations held a field hearing at the University of Baltimore seeking an update from the Baltimore Postmaster on these issues. Can you guarantee, though, that there will, from this point onward, be a significant change in those numbers and in terms of the operation here in Baltimore? My daily focus is that, to ensure we get better and we get it right and moving the mail to the customers within the communities we serve. But you can't guarantee it? Not at this time. I yield back. A local mail processing clerk testifying that staff vacancies, employee retention, and properly training workers are among their greatest challenges. We do not have enough workers, and when we hire, new employees are not trained how to sort the mail. This leads to mail being given to carriers out of order, which forces letter carriers to skip entire blocks and bring mail back to the station, or worse, mail to be delivered to the wrong address. Baltimore Postmaster Gilbert acknowledged they've struggled with their performance, but they're on the right path. Right now, I think we have the necessary tools, materials, and employees to accomplish the mission. While lawmakers continue to keep a close eye on area operations and how leadership tackles these problems. You ask whether we're confident that that's going to happen, and my answer is we're going to continue to keep the pressure on until it does. Accountability is important at the Baltimore level. It's important at the federal level. The Maryland federal delegation also wants to see a change in leadership at the top. They want Postmaster DeJoy gone. They also expect more changes with the passage of the Postal Service Reform Act. It passed the House with bipartisan support last week and is expected to be voted in the Senate this week. For WMAR 2 News, I'm Mallory Safaste. The federal legislation helps with funding the Postal Service by no longer refunding health benefits for its current and retiring employees, as well as requiring employees to enroll in Medicare. These measures are expected to save nearly $50 billion over the next 10 years. It will also require USPS to create an online dashboard with national and local data showing delivery times. 